Queen Discord. And me. Oh, they already knew about you, Ceres. Yes, but as an asteroid, I'm going to be recognised as a planet if the scientists agree on a new definition. Didn't they say that over a century ago? We decided to keep you as an asteroid. Honestly, Mars, that's really rubbing salt into the wound, isn't it? Yes, it is Venus, but that's the way Mars is. Always putting the dampers on anything wonderful that doesn't involve him. I don't see how I'm upset you, Ceres. It's the Earthlings that are messing you about. They can't make their minds up. They made a mistake in the past, but now that their equipment is more advanced and sophisticated, they can see more clearly, and this time, They'll know my status for certain! But I'm a completely new discovery. To the Earthlings may be seen a... but not to us. Mars! It's alright, Venus. I can handle him. I'm not going to allow you to spoil my newfound fame in the world, Mars. Well, just say it. Well, please don't. I haven't asked you for a comment, so if you have nothing positive to say, then just keep your remarks to yourself. Right now, all I want to do is shine. Go ahead and shine, my delightful bright chasuble. You shine all you like. Thank you, Venus. I am two double zero three U B three one three. They are obsessed with numbers, those earth people. Far too mathematical for my way of thinking. I think I prefer my nickname, Zena. Zena. It's certainly easier to remember and much more distinctive. It suits you, my dear. Thank you, Jupiter. It's a lovely name, darling. Congratulations on your earthly naming. Thank you, Venus. What about me? What about you, Ceres? What about me? I'm the largest asteroid. I may be seen as a major planet down there soon. Weren't you listening to the astronomers, Mars? Or is it that you're just a wee bit jealous that me and Xena are in the limelight for a change? <laughs> me? Jealous? Certainly not. Now come on, Mars. We should all realise this is a great moment for Ceres as well as Xena. So, don't I get a compliment and a round of congratulations to you two? Are very beautiful, my wonderful beaming star. Many, many congratulations to you two, Ceres. Oh, Venus, I wish I could see myself. Do I really beam? Without a doubt. Well, they must have invented an extra super telescope to get a glimpse of me. I wonder what I look like through a lens. Exquisite, I should think. Very striking. The astronomer would most certainly have fallen in love with you. Oh, Venus, do you really think so? Absolutely, darling. <laughs> I'm so happy. And I'm so ecstatic. I think I could burst. Oh, please don't do that, Ceres. We cannot afford that to happen. You'll make an awful mess of everything up here. Oh, I only meant it to be in the metaphoric sense, Saturn. Thank heavens for that. We have enough of the meteors and comets flying about all over the place without you bursting too. He must be a very clever little thing to have spotted me. I'm so very far away. That's an understatement, isn't it? <laughs> yes, all right, Zena. They finally spotted you, and the reason it's taken so long is because you're behind me and the rest of us. In fact, you're even beyond Pluto. You've been hidden to the Earthlings. What do you mean behind? I am a lot further away, yes, but in my own space. I'm not in those backside of you, Mars. And if and when I look the other way, who's the one behind them? All of you? Don't be so defensive, Zena. I was only putting me down. He certainly was. You're always destroying the moment. Why can't you just be happy for us, Mars? Oh, come on, that's enough, you three. You're giving me a spinning headache, shouting from one to the other. 
It doesn't really matter, does it? We're all part of the cosmos, and that's really quite fantastic in itself, isn't it? It was Zeno who started it, Cecil. What? You were the one intimidating me and me? No, I was not intimidating over of you. That's how you interpreted my statement. I thought we all agreed it is Earth that's aggressive, unreasonable, and argumentative. Do you really want to stoop to Earth's level? Well said, my dear. Good old spreader of love. As always, Venus comes to the rescue. Uh, less of the old. Chupi, thank you. And always so well mannered. I try my best. Congratulations again on your being discovered, Zena, and to you, Ceres. But Saturn is right. You do realize that you've always been a part of the cosmos, and that's all that really matters. But Venus, this is extra special because this discovery has changed everything for her. Steady on. Nothing has been confirmed yet. <laughs> matter with Neptune. Oh, don't be so stern with him, Saturn. You know how sensitive he is. He's always so touchy. It's pathetic. I'll deal with him. What's troubling you, Neptune? I can't bear it. I'm close to flooding again. Why can't they just leave well alone, bloody voyeurs? Don't they think we're entitled to any privacy? Oh, for goodness sake. They only know that we're here. Well, our planets, that is. I mean, they don't really know anything about us. They haven't invaded us, have they? Not yet, they haven't. And they are talking about setting up home with you, Mars. First it's the moon, and now Mars. And they've sent that bloody rocket thing that's on its way to Pluto. So how long before they set up camp over this neck of the woods? What rocket thing? It's a kind of an investigative device to see if there's life up here and incidentally they've sent some to Mars. But we're unsuccessful. The last robot got lost. That's right, Zina. Apparently the device is going to take nine years to get here. Is nine years a long time, Pluto? It is to Earthling, Sirius. Some of those who are involved on the mission might even be retired or dead by the time it arrives, and that's if it makes the journey at all. Dead? All species on planet Earth are mortal series. They cannot go on living forever. Time is significant to them. Everything is worked to time. They plan a lot and they think a lot. They have a past, a present, and a future. Some forever live in the past. Or always think ahead instead of living in the present, which is the moment itself. And very tragically, some don't have a future at all because they either perish far too soon or live unfruitful lives. Oh, how sad! Yes, life is sad for a lot of them. Some are happier and more fortunate than others. It's part of their tapestry to come up against opposites and have what they call ups and downs, circumstances of life. And this device that they've sent, could it hurt us? No, it can't. Like Zina said, the Earthlings just want to know of our existence. Oh, so they're trying to be friendly then. Interfering peeping toms is what they are. Oh, Neptune, dear, why do you have to be so negative? Don't you feel at all curious about other places and other living things? After all, we can see them as well as each other, and we don't need telescopes. In fact, we know everything that's going on down there. But we were made this way. We can't help it. We don't go out of our way to see them. However, they are dangerous barbarians, in fact, always plotting to attack, hurt and take. They are beastly to each other and to all other species on their planet, and most of those species are becoming extinct. They have no regard for the environment and the ecosystem. <laughs> Just look at global warming. 
is a catastrophe. They are destroying themselves and everything else around them. They spend far more on arms than they do on health care, which means that life is insignificant to them. They're in absolute dire straits down there, uh, and most of them are in complete denial of the fact, or, or, or don't give a damn. So why should they want to be friends of any of us? They just want to come up here and take over. They'll commit mass genocide if they choose to, and use us in ghastly experiments and take all our resources, and for what? All for the sake of vanity, to make headlines of more money than they would ever need or be able to spend. They're looking to move up here because their own planet is coming to a bitter end because of their own ignorance, greed and stupidity. I don't want them up here! Do calm down. Don't you think your attitude is extremist, Neptune? Extremist? I haven't even started. Good heavens. He's gone mad. I heard that, Saturn. I've never been saner than now. You wait and see. One day you'll say Neptune was right. Now come on, Neptune. Let's be fair. The Earthlings are not all like what you've described. You're just looking at the negative side of the world. It's the corrupt governments and the complexities of life and being human that's causing a lot of these problems. Exactly. Being human is the problem. Humans are horrendous creatures. I meant that human beings make mistakes, Neptune. Planet Earth is actually quite a spectacular place. And many humans are very clever. Consider it underwear. There's nothing those humans won't attempt. They take incredible risks. Face almost unimaginable challenges. Just take a look at their achievements and inventions and you'll see the ingenuity of their expertise. The majority of them are trying to do things right. There's some great teaching and learning going on. Fantastic advancement, technology and planning for a peaceful and positive future for everyone in the world. Oh, well said, Pluto. It's so sad that the majority have to suffer because the minority are out of control. I'm afraid the minority stand out, and the minority are in control and multiplying. Clever, ha! Ah, who exactly? The majority must be very stupid to follow single dictators, all those trillions of people, and they allow the odd few to wreak havoc. He's got a point, you know. People are like sheep. They follow the worst possible kind of leaders. How can the very few brainwash a considerable majority? It beggars belief. It's not really for us to judge, Mercury. They have to work these things out for themselves. It's not as simple as you might think. People need leaders to set rules and guidelines. If a system isn't in place, they'd be complete anarchy. Granted, some followers are led by cruel regimes, but even with those in place, there is still order of a kind. Life on Earth is brutally unfair, and even more tragic, the divide is down to the Earthlings themselves. We Martians have been to Earth a number of times. I suppose that makes us nosy parkers too, doesn't it? Voyeurs or peeping toms, as Neptune described, uninvited visitors. We might even be seen as a threat, surfing skies in the dead of night and our flying saucers, headlights beaming like the sun has dropped to earth. But you didn't harm anybody, did you? You didn't take anything from them and you certainly didn't order them about or set up home there. Neptune has got a point, you know. It's not in any of our natures to be cruel or unfair. We might have disagreements, but we have discussions and always resolve issues. There's no dictatorship here. But those Earth people, they really are something else. It's pure curiosity, Mercury. They couldn't ever get here, yet they don't live here. I agree with Mars. We know it's impossible for the Earthlings to commit any of those acts against us. Be careful with absolutes. Never say never, and never ever say impossible. 
Listen to yourself. You've just said never, and you think that everyone on planet Earth is a waste of space. You were using absolutes. Don't be so pedantic, Saturn. You know very well what I mean. But it's true. They'll never get here. What did I say about absolutes? We're too far away. We've been around way before them, and even before the dinosaurs. And besides, we are closer to God. Exactly. Oh, bravo. Well said again, Pluto. Well, I say, let them come. And if there's the teeniest chance they'll attack, I'll protect you all. Here he goes. The martyr has spoken. And what would you do exactly, Uranus? Well, um... Oh, come on, Yuri, get it out. I'll get in a school. <laughs> <laughs> so funny about that? Oh, Yuri, just think about it. Why do you always feel the need to be so macho, Yuri? And what is so wrong in wanting to protect you, Saturn? And you, Mercury? <laughs> Nothing, Yuri. Nothing at Come all. on, ladies. It really is quite a gallant thing to do. What if Yuri urinated? Sorry. <laughs> I mean, if Yuri uranuses them all. <laughs> Ignore them. Thank you for your bravery, Yuri. My pleasure, Venus. Trust Venus always to be so nice and positive about everything. It's almost sickening. Well, what's the point of negatives? They just cause friction and depression. Don't you feel at all flattered and touched that Yuri wants to <laughs> piss on our uninvited guests? To shield us. With what? Oh, Saturn. Mercury, really? Yuri should keep his shield under wraps because it just won't be necessary. We don't need protection. We're already protected in space. What good is one little shield anyway? <laughs> Whether we need protection or not, with whatever Yuri uses, is beside the point. Now, come on. We have to hand it to him. Yuri is very brave to volunteer to step into the front line. <laughs> with his shield in hand. Right, that's it. Okay, I give in. He's amusing, I'll say that. He certainly makes us laugh. <laughs> but it wasn't supposed to be funny. Well, that's probably why it was. Do you know what makes you funny? Go on. Because of your delivery, for one. And too simply, because you don't realise that you have a comic quality. And three, you're so serious with your outbursts. I do that. No, Yuri, you mustn't say that. Saturn and Mercury are not laughing at you. They could have fooled me. They've got a little carried away with the joke, that's all. It's a wonderful asset being able to make others laugh. Comic quality is what Mercury said. She was paying you a compliment. But I want to be taken seriously. I'm sorry if you think I offended you, Yuri. But Mercury, you are not offensive. You've nothing to apologise for. She doesn't mean it anyway. No, Yuri. I do mean it. Why now, all of a sudden? Because you're upset and I've upset you and... And? I need to put things right so we can move on. Go on. I'm sorry I laughed. Really? I'm sorry I find you funny. Anything else? I'm sorry I shot your gallantry. Yes, you did. Thank you for wanting to protect us, Yuri. Will you accept my apology, Yuri? For you, Mercury. Yes, I suppose so. For now, anyway. Thank the heavens for that. Well, I think it's great the Earthlings want to come and find us, so you must not do whatever it is you said you would do, Yuri. Oh, I'd love to meet the astronomer who first set his eyes on me. They might just achieve their aim one day. Didn't the Earthmen send us some photographs once? In the 1970s, I think it was. Lots of various images. They were trying to communicate with us via pictures, weren't they? Yes, I do believe you're right, you. Uh, we've still got those pictures somewhere. They were hoping for a response. They got very close to getting one, too. They're persistent. I'll give them that. So? What went wrong? Nothing went wrong. None of us replied. Why ever not? 
It was decided that we keep the scientists guessing, give them something to do, more to think about. We didn't feel the need or desire to respond. The bottom line is we didn't want them coming here. We? You just used an absolute Neptune. Just speak for yourself. Talking of scientists, they have a shortage of them on planet Earth, you know? Too difficult a subject for most of them. And the good ones take years to make discoveries, and even most of those are fluke findings. Well, they've got their work cut out now. They have to rewrite the science books and go to tons of meetings to come to unanimous decisions. And they have to keep an extra watchful eye over all the other planets and that they've yet to discover. And to top it all, the new age people will have to incorporate me and Cerise into their horoscopes. Gosh, that's a point. We're going to make a huge difference to the Earthlings' destinies, aren't we, Xena? Yeah, can you imagine reading? Xena, in your part this month means excitement. Mystical happiness. <laughs> or how about this? Series moving into your sign will bring sparkle and the extra bit of magic into your love life. <laughs> I love your childlike sentiment. You certainly will change things, but let's hope it's for the best, eh? Hey? And before we all start jumping to conclusions, best be vigilant over the astronomers' meeting. At conference, if you please. It still boils down to the same thing. It's a fancier word, that's all. Fools. They have meetings about meetings, they do. <laughs> and after hours or even days of deliberating and voting, they probably still won't get it right. I mean, what do they know about us, eh? They don't really know much, they just play guess games. Oh, hello and goodbye to you too. Who said there wasn't any stress up here? Honestly, all this washing about, he missed me by a whisker. Oh, he was handsome. Where do you think he was heading to? God only knows what it's going to be a crash landing by the speed he was going at. I wonder why some can't keep still like the rest of them. Some can't remain static, Zina. They have to keep moving. That's what makes us all individual. We all have a need to do different things because we all have varying energies, desires, and qualities. Meteors can't remain still. Their spirits have to burst. But even we don't really keep still, do we? We rotate, stars twinkle, some of us orbit. But we don't have to travel like that. That was some speed. I'd like to do something different instead of just floating in limbo. But you wouldn't want to burst though, would you? Well, maybe not. Earthlings burst with excitement. In fact, they have to get excited to reproduce. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ladies, thank you for that. Any time, Pluto, mate. Any time. Uranus is right. Humans do get excited, but they don't literally burst, you mean. Not quite like the meteors. It's more of an emotional thing with the Earthlings. Although it has been known that some humans have, uh, very mysteriously, and literally exploded due to something called spontaneous human combustion. What a mouthful! What's that bit at home? The entire torso, trunk and limbs literally explode, leaving intact on the floor the head, shoulders and feet. Oh, how horrid! Pity the person who finds the remains. What causes it? Earthlings are made up of gas, water and electricity. Really? How strange! That description just makes them sound like bags of fluid and slime. Well, where do the feelings come into it? Yes, and the soul, and the spirit. They are those things too because of their brains, which give them their characters. But many are not spiritual, and tragically, some of them lack a soul. Yes, and a heart. They really are the devil incarnate, those ones. 
Curie. Ah, oh, yes, the devil. I was just wondering when we were going to talk about him. He's in the opposite direction, isn't he? Heaven is where God is, all the way up there above us. We're here in space. Earth is all the way down there, and hell, where the devil resides, is even further down. All the way down to the bottom, wherever the bottom is. Thank goodness. Spot on, Zina and Ceres. So, where's purgatory? Geographically, nowhere, because purgatory doesn't exist. Purgatory is actually a place that humans have invented to make all those, for want of a better expression, middle of the roaders, uh, that they an alternative place to go after death if they are deserving of neither heaven nor hell. It's also a place for the agnostics, those who are unsure of what or who to believe in. Is it the devil? that's causing all the problems on planet Earth. Well, that's what the Christian church preaches. Apparently, humans are tempted by the devil. Well, it's true, they are. And very easily, too. They've absolutely no willpower at all, those stupid earthlings. I mean, look at Adam and Eve. The devil told her to eat the sacred fruit. And after everything she was told by the supreme being, she took notice of a snake and ruined poor Adam's life by offering the apple to him. That's not fair. Adam didn't have to eat the apple, did he? He could have said no, but he didn't. So he was as much to blame as Eve. Her life was ruined too. I agree with Zena. Can you imagine being tempted by a piece of fruit? How ridiculous is that? Honestly, male earthlings cannot say no to anything. I wonder what kind of apple it was to have been tempted so much. Well, it obviously wasn't worth it because look at what happened. They and the rest of the world thereafter were made to suffer for their disobedience and lack of trust in God. We're only taking into consideration the faith of Christianity here and the world comprises of several beliefs, gods and goddesses. Some don't believe in religion at all. The atheists believe in evolution. What's evolution? Evolution is when animals have been reshaped over time from the animal nearest to their species. I don't understand. It is thought that humans were once apes, and with time they gradually began to walk upright, shed their body fur, and began talking. But why are there still apes? Apparently. The ape population divided, and some went off in one direction, and the remainder went off in the other. The different habitats and the way the world separated over time played a role in their state. I know, it still doesn't fit, does it? There are so many theories that just don't add up. Maybe that's why there are so many different faiths. Because humans just can't make up their minds which is the right one. You could be right there, Sirius. Yes, but surely all faiths lead to the same destination in the end? If there's a supreme being, there's only one. As for evolution, ancient man as well as beast, plant, land, and chasuble, anything in existence in the universe has had to come from a greater force because it, they, and we have been designed. So even if evolution is true, it still has to come about in some way, yes? I would agree with that 100%. So, to confirm, everything has been created and therefore has a creator. Absolutely. Those Earth people just haven't realised. They use religion to destroy each other. They're too busy fighting over who is right and who is better, who is evil and who is great. So, who created the Creator then? Well, there isn't an answer to that one either, is there? There is no answer because none of us has an answer. We don't have answers to everything, Tina, and sometimes there are no answers at all. We're really getting into a science that none of us has knowledge. We can only go by the Holy Scriptures, scientific studies, theories, and 
archaeological findings. But God must have come from somewhere or something. I feel that God is and always was. He is the supreme, the creator, cannot be created, for he is eternity itself. The life, the soul, the spirit that breathes into every particle that is the universe. God created man in his own image. If man evolved, it would mean that God has had to evolve too. And I doubt the superior force could ever evolve. He doesn't need to. The Almighty always was, is, and shall continue to be. Sublime, Pluto. Absolutely sublime. Going back to why everything is such a mess on planet Earth, it is because humans have been given free will, which is the crux of the world's trouble. They are not following the Ten Commandments. Power man is what a lot of them have become obsessed with, and they abuse it to the hilt. They love to dictate to those who are weaker. I say God should be rid of Earth. But God isn't a dictator. He is the powerful one, but he doesn't want to abuse his power. Hence, planet Earth remains, even with all its imperfections. He loves his creation, too much even, and so much that he gave his only begotten son to a death most brutal to save the world. That is the greatest act of love ever, to save mankind. So, if he could kill his son, he could exterminate the barbarians too. God didn't kill his son. He sent him to earth to save mankind. And to do that, Christ had to die. But at the hands of those who didn't recognize him. But he rose again, resurrected by God, his father, to join him in heaven. Can't you see? God was trying to communicate with the earthlings. Christ was his messenger. The one who would take the strain and the pain so that man would recognize and believe that there really is a great force. God doesn't want to abuse his power by destroying his masterpiece just because it has gone off track. He wanted and still wants people to put the world to rights, to work problems out for themselves, with each other and for one another in a manner where nobody gets hurt. He has given the human race a chance to get on and live happy, equal and fruitful lives. Well, it's gone on far too long, this so-called chance. They prove they cannot live civilly. They are certainly not equal. Many don't even have a right to live their lives free of fear, starvation and oppression. They've made absolutely sure that there's a hierarchy, an outrageous class system that divides and places people into conspicuous groups. What with the social structure, ethnic pigeonholing, and the differing religions, the animosity begins and wars break out in all proportions. Then there are all the natural as well as man-made disasters. So, with all this unfairness and tragedy, why doesn't the Supreme Being just get on with it? Bring about Armageddon and start the world over? Maybe he will very soon. Sooner than expected. It'll come like a thief in the night. Uh, so the scriptures say. There's no maybe about it. It's definite. You four really believe in God, don't you? I've always believed in an unseen, absolute power beyond anywhere anything and anyone I can imagine. There has to be. I know there is. I feel it. Yes, I most certainly do. There cannot be anything else. I feel him too. Very close to him, you know. Yes, I do too, Zena. I've never doubted there's a God. I think even those atheists believe in God underneath it all, especially when they want something or when they're in trouble. <laughs> Funny how those ones start praying like mad then. I mean, who else can they pray to when things go wrong, apart from God? So you do too, don't you, don't you? What do they call you? Bullet? Didn't you hear me rant about Armageddon? 
Of course I believe in him, but I'm very impatient with him right now. I'm on the fence with this one. If there is someone up there who really cares, surely, he cannot go on witnessing such brutality. He should have put an end to it from the onset. Or better still, should never have let it happen. There's so much evidence that man has come from evolution. And why on earth would God want to create dinosaurs? Especially as they were destroyed. Man didn't kill them because he wasn't creating them. And if God doesn't destroy what, he's, what he creates, then who is responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs? A comet killed them. Oh, yes, but God is responsible for comets too, isn't he? So, he killed them. Why create them in the first place? Especially as he doesn't believe in killing. Maybe he was just practicing making living things for planet Earth when he made the dinosaurs. And when he decided to create humans, he realized the two obviously couldn't live together, side by side. And because he preferred the humans, the dinosaurs had to go. How do we know God is he? Because he created Adam first. Eve came second. Oh, so to begin with, then God was just practicing when he created Adam? Or did he think that Adam couldn't cope on his own without the dinosaur? Is that why he had to create a woman? I don't think Mars could cope on his own up here somehow because he has nobody to intimidate. I need stated what's written in the scriptures, whereas Zeno was being sarcastic. About the male species. Well, that makes a change, and that's a bitch coming from you. Oh, enough, you three. Let's not spoil such a wonderful and serious discussion. I uh, only said he made Adam first and Eve second. What's wrong with that? That's not the way it was recorded. He made man, whom he called Adam, and then he made woman, whom he called Eve, so that the two would keep each other company and go forth and multiply. There was no mention of the first and second. You make one sound more important other you do. Now you're being really pedantic. I'm just setting the record straight. Okay, now let's go back to Adam and Eve. They disobeyed God, so he should have wiped the slate clean and started the human race again. Create two people who would stick to the rules. If God exterminated Adam and Eve, he would have broken one of his ten commandments. Thou shall not kill. It would have made him a murderer. But he killed the dinosaurs. As for the dinosaurs, we, we just don't know Saturn. Oh, it doesn't make sense. Even with all the things that don't fit, I still believe in God in all his glory. And Neptune is right about one thing. Really? And what is that? Armageddon will definitely come one day. Roll on, Armageddon. What is Armageddon? God's war to end wickedness and bring about a new and happy beginning. War? God will start a war? People are killed in wars. So, Jupiter, he will end up destroying us after all. We don't know exactly how he'll bring about change. But the scriptures say there will be a resurrection. And all or some of those who lived and those who still have life will be judged. God, and only God, will decide what happens to them. Maybe, once people recognize him, they will start again on a new footing, and those who don't will become or remain as dust, while all those who perished and did not have a proper chance to know about him will walk the earth again to begin anew. Some might remain asleep, depending on their conduct or circumstances when they had life, and whether they ever acknowledged or will acknowledge the great force. Oh, it all sounds very confusing and complicated. What about you, Mars? You haven't told us what you believe in. Well, we just are. What exactly? We just exist. Elaborate? That's it. So, you don't believe in anything? Except that we, the universe, is in existence, and we will go on as long as it does. Until, who knows? So, after telling us about the creation of the humans by God, you don't believe in it all? In a word, no. 
The scriptures have been written by man, not by God. The scriptures have been written by man via God. Now, this is getting really very heavy. How about you, Yuri? What do you believe in? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm a bit flummoxed. Well, that figures. No, Saturn. I do know. Oh. I do beg your pardon. Well? Hang on. Just give me a minute. I've got it! Yes? Well, let us have it, then. Mercury, I, I never thought you cared. Your thoughts, Yuri. Yes. Right. Um, my thoughts. Here goes. I firmly believe in reproduction. Reproduction? We're talking about God versus evolution, Yuri. I was asked what I believe in, and I'm telling you. Oh, we do beg your pardon once again. Please carry on. That's it. Reproduction. What about reproduction? Can't believe you missed the point. And what is your point exactly? We'll all keep going because of it. What? Can't you see? No. We must be really stupid, Saturn, because we've missed the point. Oh, come on, Yuri. Enlighten us with this fantastic point we failed to grasp. S. E. X. Sex? Yes, sex. None of us can live without it. I strongly believe in sex. We gathered that from the onset, Yuri. Well, think about it, will you? What is there to think about? Look, every living thing has some kind of sexual encounter to carry on. I really didn't know that, Saturn. Did you? Not at all. So that's what we've been doing since time immemorial. That little bit of bumbling about. Even the asexual creatures do it. How did you work that one out? They have sex with themselves. Oh, good grief. Can you imagine never having to rely on anything or anyone whenever you feel in the mood? Whenever you want to reproduce, you can just do it. Just like that. They just divide. Precisely. They must get some kind of orgasmic sensation out of the process, surely. Somehow I can't imagine Yuri enjoying himself as an amoeba. I thought we were talking about God. How on earth did we get into amoebas? Where did we get him from? Oh, I don't know, but he's really something else, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Trust Yuri. Just when I thought we were actually having an entire discussion without that subject. But even up here, it's proven impossible. Well, I don't know what to say. And I don't know what I believe in. I'm just very confused. You don't have to say anything, Sims. And you can take your time and mull over everything and come to a decision for yourself in your own time. But I'm scared. I don't know which way to turn. And I feel I should believe in something right now. Well, I'm here, and that's what's important to me right now. I'll just go wherever I can shine. Actually, if there is a god, where do we fit into his plans when he brings about this end to wickedness war? There'll be no more wars. Just. I'm being very serious here. Well, as far as we know, it's the world that's going to come to an end, Saturn. We are not planet Earth, and we haven't done anything wrong to be included in Armageddon. We are doing the job we were allocated to do, so I can't see us being judged in the same way again at all. However, God must have something planned for us. Oh, I say. Let Armageddon come to haunt those humans once and for all. Shh, listen. Can you all hear that? He must have heard me. It is here. What is he going on about now? What's here? Armageddon! Oh, it can't be, not yet. Now, we'll never know our outcome in the world. No. It's not Armageddon. It's the 
scientists. They're having their conference. <laughs> the moment of truth, everyone. Correction! It's the Earthling's moment of truth. Somehow I don't think you'll be pleased with the outcome. Now what did I say about negativity? How many more times? I'm being realistic. It doesn't really matter what they think, does it? It'll be their opinion. I thought we all agreed that. Well, I've already said that we're all part of the cosmos and have a significant role to play. We know what we're about. So as long as we're clear, let the Earthlings write what they want in their science books. Do you think we can all be quiet and listen now, please? Absolutely. Quiet now, everyone. Oh. Oh. Did you all hear that?
sure I heard the name. Eris? Just how big has Pluto got to be exactly? Mammoth! Well, he's big enough as far as I can see. And if Pluto is big enough for me, he should be big enough for them. Philistines! Neptune was right all along. The Earthlings know nothing at all! With his knowledge and wisdom, Pluto is the Dalai Lama of the Milky Way. And so much for their catchphrase, great things come in small packages. Hear, hear! Absolutely! Did you hear that, scientists? Pluto is great! He is magnificent! Good grief. Venus has lost it. She's actually got into one. By Jove, she sounds so passionate when she's angry. Go, Venus, go! I think Venus should step into the front line if ever we're invaded. Venus, you've actually criticised. You're furious. Good on you. Isn't it great to throw a few punches? It's not in my nature to react in such an undignified, uncontrolled manner, but this takes the biscuit! I'm actually lost for words. Good. Keep it that way, Mars, and you won't hurt anyone. But you weren't lost for words from the start. Take a leaf out of the moon's book, Mars. She just looks pretty. Bathes us all in her luminous light and keeps quiet. Oh, that's enough bickering. Pluto, dearest, are you all right? Oh, God. How insensitive of me, of all of us, not to ask how our philosopher is until now. <laughs> no worries, my dear. I've never felt better. What? Don't you mind? Why on earth should I? Pluto can take it. And besides, what did Saturn say earlier? Doesn't matter what the Earthlings think. They're entitled to their opinion. Their decision doesn't make the slightest difference to any of us up here, because nothing has changed. But of course. Oh, how silly of me. Where is my dignity? Of course it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter one iota. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, everyone, are we bothered? No, no we are not bothered. Actually bothered. So again, are we bothered? No, no, we are bothered. bothered. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I am bothered now. We don't get thunder and lightning up here, do we? No, Uranus, we don't. Never. We're too high and there's no cloud here, it always bypasses. There's no rain with either. I suppose there's always a first time for everything. No, this is odd. Very strange. Pluto, say something. Just stay calm. There's nothing we can do about it. All we can do is wait. Wait? For what exactly? Yuri, there is nothing we can... That was the second time, and I really don't like it. No, I don't either. But Pluto is right. What's going on? You don't think? No, it can't be. What? It is! It is! Did I tell you all? Oh, be quiet, Neptune! Pluto? Pluto? He's 
gone. So have Saturn and Mercury. But their lights are still shining. Not for long. Look, they're dimming. Oh no! No! What about Mars? Yuri! What about Mars? Yuri! Yuri! He's disappeared. They both are. Not without all of you. Siri! 